Neptam Tuner here, like and subscribe. This video is about the breather systems. And I've got a few different breather systems laid out right here. What I've been doing lately with these breather systems is the most common failure. Let me just, let me just talk about this breather system real quick. What they call it is a breather module. Some people are gonna call them breathers. Some people are gonna call them oil separators. Some people are gonna call them PVC valve. valve. PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve, is this little button in the bottom here. I've got one of them kind of taken apart right here. And uh, this main middle part right here, it's the part that typically fails. There's a rubber diaphragm and uh, they, they call that rubber diaphragm, the, the middle part is the pressure regulating valve. And you can buy a new diaphragm for these and that's what I've been doing. I've got this uh, diaphragm kit right here and basically you just replace the cap on top and it comes with a new one of these rubber diaphragms. Um, when they get old, the, the hot blow by gases gets to them and they can start getting cracks and uh, then eventually they can completely deteriorate. So initially I'm thinking, you know, that's the only thing that fails on these things is the diaphragm. Occasionally I'll replace a diaphragm kit. Well, I'm getting more and more into all these little nuances and I'm starting to realize that there's more to this breather valve than just this diaphragm. Let me just show you this breather that I cut open real quick. So I cut that top open right here. There was a spring in there. I, I can't remember where I put it, but there's a little spring in here and uh, positive crankcase ventilation will push this valve open and it'll also be assisted by sucking it open. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I understand every single complexity of this valve. There is a, uh, this is where the blow-by gases come up through. There's a blow-by duct in the block the blow-by duct on this block is here on the oil filter housing side below the water pump. And uh, it's been a while since I had one of these covers off. So let's take a quick look at this thing. I guess I gotta pry it off here. It's on there pretty good. Hmm. So you see there's just some uh, passageways, some hidden passageways in there where some of the blow by can get through and circulate and ultimately it comes up through a passageway here in that corner and it comes up through the engine here right here and it comes up through the cylinder head so the blow by duct goes through that passageway right here in the cylinder head and then It's that small little corner right there is where the blow-by gases come up through. And then it goes through this cyclone right here and then the oil's dripped back down through this hole right here. And the oil drips back through that port right there in the corner on the opposite side. So you see how this breather module sits now, this back here, that part right there is where this is sitting. So the blow by gases come in through here on the end and they go through this swirl valve right here 
and then this is where the oil is dropped back down into the block. So there's uh, another type of weird spring mechanism and, and some stuff going on in here to where the blow-by gases come up through here, swirl around, and then the oil's delivered back down into the block through this passageway. So this main valve right here with the diaphragm, it's constantly working between naturally aspiration and boost, um, non-turbo and turbo. So your boost comes on probably around a little bit after 2,500 RPM. Anything before that, we're sucking our hydrocarbons, our, our blow-by gases into the intake and then carboning up our valves. Anything over boost, whenever we're in boost, we're sucking on the boost side intake hose. So you see this intake charge coming into the intake side of the turbocharger. It's also pulling air from this side of the breather assembly, the breather module. And uh, it's working on both sides here. So this port right here on your intake manifold, it's gonna be sucking vacuum. But what happens when you get into boost? When you get into boost, all this boost pressure is also going to be pushing out right here. So this is constantly going from vacuum boost, vacuum boost, everything in your intake manifold will. Now, there's no vacuum before the throttle body. The throttle body is what creates the vacuum to, to specify a little bit further. But right here, there should be the most common PCV valve type deal right in here. So we're, we're sucking vacuum out of this breather module, but then when we get into boost, we want to shut this part off. So if you'll notice in this, uh, this valve that I have cut open here, you see I cut this part open right here and you can see inside there, there's a little rubber flap diaphragm underneath that. So that is what's supposed to stop air from going in, the boost from going in. It allows the vacuum to be sucked, pulled from this port, but then whenever boost happens, boost is not supposed to be able to come in this breather valve. Let me demonstrate. So, you might not want to suck on your breather like I'm doing, but whatever. I'm going to try this one first since it's all cut open. So, first we're going to suck on it. It pulls nicely. You can hear it coming through here. Now I'm gonna blow on it and see if that flap is working properly. You hear that? Some air is still coming through here. So let me try another one. I got another one sitting right here. Let's try this one. You see, that's what it normally looks like. I just cut it open to see kind of what was going on. You see there's a spring mechanism in that PCV valve right here. Anyway. Let's try this one. Pulls nicely. Oh, the taste, the taste isn't very good. Let's see if it stops. Now I'm blowing. Instead of sucking, I'm blowing. Okay, that one stops a whole lot better. There's a lot less airflow coming out. But there's still a very little bit. There's a lot more coming out of this one. That's coming out of the flap. That's not me missing. Let's try this one. This one just has the top missing, but that doesn't affect this valve inside here. So first we're gonna pull. Pulls nicely. <laughs> that one has a pretty big discrepancy in the valve. Are, are they all like that? Let's try another one. These all have probably over 10 years on them. These are. Mm, I don't know, maybe eight, six to six to ten years. Some of them were updated like four years after the car was new. These have at least six years on them, all of them. Probably every single one of them has at least 60,000 miles on them. Pulls nicely. <coughs> okay, that one. 100% perfect. The valve in this one is 100% perfect. 
Let's try this. This one looks like it's a little bit newer. Perfect. This valve, 100% perfect. That was me blowing. This thing is wide open. This thing is not shutting. Boy, my lips are all oily. It's like I've been kissing a 2.0T. So basically what's happening is your precious boost is getting forced into your engine. Not only do you have to deal with your blow by gases, but now you have boost being pushed into your engine. So you have to just replace these things. You have to re just replace the whole thing. I'll go ahead and still check them. Maybe, you know, I'll, I'll make sure whenever I'm dealing with these things, now I'm always going to do the old blow test. And it's pretty hard to take this hose off and do that test, but there's enough movement in that hose to where you can pop it off and test it through the hose like this. And then you can kind of get in there and blow on the end of the hose itself. So is this completely ridiculous? I don't know. You tell me. Was it useful? If so, hit the like and subscribe. Naptown Tuner. Naptown Tuner here. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you've been following along, and look, I know I mess with a lot of two liters, but this, this kind of stuff, it's engine stuff. It can apply to all kinds of vehicles. I have been a mechanic my entire life, and I would not have ever guessed that just a simple belt snapping could cause so much catastrophic damage. I did not make this up. This is not a story I wrote. I had a serpentine belt that completely came apart because the bearing on the tensioner pulley locked up. So whenever the belt came apart, it snapped off. I have a video of it live happening. I, I recorded it when it happened. You can hear the belt snap. I drove the thing about 25 minutes home. I actually got stranded. I got about a mile from my house. I had to go rescue this thing. Anyway, this serpentine belt, when it broke, it got behind the crankshaft pulley, behind, it tore up the front main crankshaft seal, and then pieces of the strand of the belt got caught in the timing chain, and the timing chain just pulled more and more in. And then it got rotated around in the engine everywhere. The timing chain kept on chewing it up, going nom, 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 nom. And now I have a completely useless engine full of rubber. I have to take the engine out and I have to completely go all the way through it. And it's not gonna be fun and it's not gonna be pretty. And I knew this from the start, but I figured I'd go ahead and just try to clean it out just to see. I, I could have gone to the full extent of taking the pan off and cleaning the whole pan on. Dude, there's so much rubber in this thing. I just knew for a fact I was gonna have to take the engine out and completely go through it. The pieces of rubber that were coming out were so tiny. There's millions of them. And someone mentioned they'd like to see the oil filter. I don't really know if it got past the screen because there's a little there's a little miniature screen in the oil pump and it looks something like this. So there's a pickup tube. There's an initial, there's an initial screen in this pickup tube. This is where this is what I cleaned up, my oil sump. But in the very back side of this thing, before it actually starts going through the engine, a really fine screen mechanism. These things are usually pretty clean. I suggest you putting them back in. It's a nice little filter before everything goes to the oil filter. So because it has that screen, I don't know how much I will actually find in the oil filter itself, but in a different video, I will pop it open and I'll go all the way through the paper filter. And I also took the rest of the oil out and I'll be sifting through that oil to see how much rubber was left over after exchanging the oil and cleaning out the bottom of the oil pump sump. We'll see.